This is a Hasbro adding machine from the 1960s. It's made of cheap plastic, because that's what the kids like. I was lucky enough to get mine with the original box and original instruction manual. Hey, look at this guy. He's got a blue case with gray sliders and buttons. It can store numbers up to five digits. It has a clear button and a total button that rings a bell. I've seen a few calculating devices made for kids, but this is one of the most sophisticated. It's also pretty strange, and not always in a good way. It's made by Hasbro, which is a famous toy company. Nothing on the box or the instructions says exactly when this was made, but there are a few clues. On the instruction book, it says Hassenfeld Brothers, Inc., and on the box, too. That was the original name of the Hasbro company. They became a powerhouse in the 1950s, first with Mr. Potato Head and then G.I. Joe. Another clue is this little guy. Boy, oh boy, it's a Hasbro toy! This kid was the official Hasbro spokesman from 1958 to 1968, so this must have been from the 60s. Anyway, here's how you use it. To add, you pull the strips down with your fingers all the way to the bottom and then let go. This adds the numbers into the register at the bottom. You keep on pulling down numbers and it'll keep on adding into the register. So if I want to do 392 plus 458, I do the 392 and then the 458. That's the basic idea. As usual, the little numbers are for subtracting. The box says it multiplies too, but that's just marketing. This is typical of the time. You can multiply by just adding numbers over and over again, and this machine can help you do that, but it doesn't really multiply in any real sense. It's obviously made for kids, but it works a lot like ordinary machines for grown-ups. Still, it's got some pretty weird features. First, check out this total button. It was pretty common for some types of adding machines to have a totaling button, but it doesn't make any sense for this machine, since the running total is displayed on the register at all times. But I guess a kid's adding machine is more fun if it's got more buttons. Boy, oh boy, it's a hat! Actually, I didn't tell you how you're really supposed to use this. Really, you're supposed to have the total button pushed up while you're entering the numbers. This moves a little plastic around that covers up the display. And then, the total button functions as some kind of grand reveal button. When you're ready, you push that total button down, and you finally see the answer. And to top it all off, it dings the bell. So the total button is only there so that you can choose to hide the answer from yourself until the end. That's a pretty big letdown. That ding is pretty satisfying though. Now check out the clear button. Since I just got burned with the useless total button, I've got pretty low expectations for this one. And look what happens when you press it. Nothing. It doesn't even push all the way down. And it feels like it's not even connected to anything. Lucky for us, the manual has some simple instructions. To clear your machine, make sure there are no nines or zeros showing in the answer windows. Pull total bar toward you firmly and look at the answer windows. If there are nines and or zeros visible, place index finger from right to left in top holes of the columns where the nines and zeros appear. Depress to any other number. Now place finger on clear bar and depress it as far as it will go. While clear bar is depressed, start from right to left and place index finger in top hole of each column and pull toward you to a natural stop as far as it will go without forcing. All columns will not necessarily work down to same position or to finger stop. Pull to total bar toward you and you will see zeros in the five columns. Did you understand those instructions? Actually, it's not that complicated. To clear it, you hold the clear button and pull each digit down as far as you can. The clear button causes the mechanism to jam so that the register can't spin past zero. The effect is all the digits stop at zero, which is exactly what you want. The problem is, for some reason, this doesn't work right if the digit is already a nine or a zero. So you first have to make sure all the numbers are not 9 or 0, and then do what I just said with the clear button. Here's another weird thing. Why are these columns marked A, B, C, D, E? I thought a bit about this, and it really doesn't make sense at all. If you're going to label them at all, it would make more sense to use powers of 10, you know, 1s, 10s, 100s. But why would you even do that? It should be obvious what each column represents. And if your kid doesn't already understand that, then the ABCs certainly aren't going to help. 
This thing actually functions pretty well and does most of the stuff that you'd expect from a real adding machine of the era. But everything about the instruction says cheap toy. It's really light, weighs less than a pound. I don't know if it was any better when it was made 50 years ago, but the plastic feels brittle and cheap. I'm not sure you can tell, but this thing is pretty loud and not in a good way. A loud adding machine can be fun. It can make you feel, you know, competent, like you're really doing something. It's kind of like using power tools. On this thing, there's a loud spring and a slap. It makes me feel like the whole thing's going to fall apart. It sounds like a rickety old garage door where the springs pop and bounce. You feel like they could snap at any moment. In the end, this Hasbro adding machine leaves me puzzled. It's a surprisingly capable adding machine that's basically fully featured for what it is. Then they put some nonsensical other features on it, put the whole thing in a flimsy plastic case that a kid could easily break without even trying. I don't even want to play with it too much because I'm afraid I'll break it. It's kind of like when my kid goes to a birthday party and they get the goodie bag full of worthless toys, like, like the paddle ball. My kid loves the cheap, worthless paddle ball. I just know within a few minutes the rubber band will break and the ball will fly off and break something else. I think my kid knows it too, but it doesn't matter. Somebody out there still makes those paddle balls. My kid still wants them. I'm here to start some static. Now I'm running.